Now Cat, Jalen Brunson, Mikel Bridges, OJ, OG and Anobi. Does the Cat trade make them the favorites in the East? <laughs> Might as well let me answer. <laughs> um, it, it really it puts them up there, man. I mean, they they got the best starting five in the East, in my opinion, uh, and I think they got to go prove it. You know, so if you want to keep the Celtics ahead of them, that's fine. But I, I love the versatility of this lineup. I love the addition by subtraction, in my opinion, uh, by losing Julius. And and I love being vindicated. If there's one thing you know about me, I love being right. I love being – so Shams comes out earlier this week and says that Ju- they were looking to trade Julius basically all of last year before the trade deadline. They had been in talks with um, the Timberwolves for Cat and had Julius in that trade offer repeatedly up until they finally got the deal done by adding Dante DiVincenzo. So – I, I, you, you, I just knew watching that team. I think anyone who really understands the game uh, at a high level understood that this guy stopping the ball and the way that team is structured it just doesn't make sense with a, with a ball dominant guard like Jalen Brunson. He want he want him to kind of run the run the uh, the offense and beat ahead of the snake and uh, spray the ball out to the shooters and spray the and distribute the basketball to the three and D guys and hit the cutters like Josh Hart. And, um, I think it's kind of constructed to be that way. So Julius Randle was always an odd fit, especially if you're trying to play that kind of basketball in the playoffs and win in the playoffs. I just never really saw how it made sense to have that guy on your team who's going to stop the ball on the offense, and it just it just didn't make sense. So, um, no, it was great to see that they made that move, uh, and it makes a lot of sense for them in so many ways. And I just, again, I love the defensive versatility. They can throw McCall at people. They can throw OG at people. They can throw Josh Hart at people. They have defenders. Uh, and, and they have Deuce McBride off the bench who can play some defense as well. So they got a lot of different ways they can annoy ball dominant guards on the other side or wings as well. So I really do think they're the best team in the East. I think this trade puts them there. They got to go out there and play with some with some chemistry. But I do. I really believe that. I truly, truly believe they're the best team in the East. And I think they have a great chance to uh, get to the NBA Finals. And they got to get it done soon here. It's sustainable. They can do some. Sort of, they can have this this core intact for the next four years. Because uh, they manipulated the CBA, shout out to the Knicks front office. They deserve a lot of credit. Never thought I'd be saying this, but this is they they they're they are ahead of the curve. They're ahead of the curve. They figured out this apron thing and they were able to put together their own version of a super team. And they, I think it is legitimately that uh, as well. So I, I love the fit. They can play five out. They can a lot of different ways they can play. They can throw it down to the, into the post to cat uh, as well. Their their death lineup going small. They have that too um, as well. And so I just really like the team. I like their depth. Even without DiVincenzo, it's a move. DiVincenzo doesn't stop me from making this trade. So I've got the Knicks, you know, as the best team in the East off of it on paper right now, for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I love the trade, honestly. When you, you look at it, um, it adds a different wrinkle to this team now. Now, like you said, you can go five out. Now your center is, you have to worry about him on offense. Like before, Mitchell Robinson, not really a threat, just a rebounder. He, he's, He's really good at his role, but to maximize the guys on this team and the offense, like Brunson doesn't need a guy who's just standing in the paint, clogging the paint when he's one of the best uh, post-up guards in the league right now. So um, having Cad out there for the pick and pop, that's an option. Um, and over over time in the playoffs, you got to see like this team can be special without Randall because we were able to do it. I mean, OG was playing the four, uh, even with Dante doing his thing. But, like, still, you saw, like, this team, the ball's not sticking. OG's not a guy who's looking to dribble the air out the ball for, you know, 80% of the shot clock. He's looking to shoot. If it's not open, keep the ball moving. Like, that's why I like this team as is now. Like, this, you're not getting any people who are selfish, and who knows, Randall, he's on a one-year deal right now. Who knows? He might have been a little more selfish trying to play for that that next deal next year. So that let, Minnesota can worry about that uh, this year. Um, who knows if they re-sign him? They don't have to. Um, no pressure. But, like, having Cat now, I mean, it's a, it's a long time coming. He's one of the most skilled big men in the NBA. And – seeing where the East has gone so far. The Celtics saw that um, swapping out Robert Williams for Cat, uh, for Zingas, I mean. Now that opens things up for their other guys, their perimeter guys to operate within the paint and all that stuff. So um, 
Yeah, I think this definitely puts us up there. I don't want to put us ahead of the Celtics just yet, just because they do have the crown right now, and we have to prove it. Like, there's a lot of chemistry that's going to have to be built as we go early on in the season. Um, but it's a good start. And like you said, we've got a solid four years now with this core. These guys are still young. Nobody's really older than 27, 28 right now. So um, it's good. And then health is always going to be something that you got to worry about, especially with OG. But um, as long as these guys stay healthy, I mean, the sky's the limit with this team. 